Hello and welcome to the final IU Newsnet Daily of the semester. I'm Carly Van Cleve. And I'm Katrina Nickel. Last Friday, local activists walked out of class and work and took to the streets for a climate strike. Friday was considered an international day of climate action. At 1 p.m., protesters walked out of their jobs and schools to meet for a festival at City Hall. Organized by groups like Students for a New Green World, Sunrise Movement, and Golden Bicycle. They shared music, poetry, and art. Then activists presented their demands to the mayor of Bloomington, John Hamilton. They say they want the mayor to declare a citywide climate emergency. So our purpose right here at this climate strike, which is awesome, obviously, uh, is, is just to gain um, you know, followers, uh, know, let people know about our ideas, and hopefully uh, foster an environment where they're ready to collaborate and, and uh, contribute. Activists say this isn't the end, and they have a larger goal for global, global climate action. After all the attention surrounding an IU professor's controversial tweets, this one group at IU is supporting women through sweatshirts. IU's Women in Business Club decided to show support for women in academia after Kelly professor Eric Rasmussen tweeted an article titled, Are Women Destroying Academia? Probably. The woman in business president Mandy Novikoff designed sweatshirts to raise money for the local chapter of Girls Inc., which inspires young girls to be strong, smart, and bold. The front of the sweatshirt says, female genius, and the back says, support women in academia. Novikov says that so far they've sold about 3,400 sweatshirts to people across the country. The best way that you can respond to something like this <laughs> is put a positive twist on it and completely rise above the whole situation, which is totally what we did. And it was very unexpected, but I'm just in awe of like, the support and encouragement that we're receiving, not just from students, but from faculty and then people nationwide as well. They rushed the order so people could wear their sweatshirts the week before the semester is over, and they were ready to pick up last Friday. Women in Business was encouraging students and faculty members to wear their sweatshirts on campus yesterday. A recent report shows that IU had more reports of sexual violence than ever last school year, a pressing issue that leaves students taking action, and it's through the vandalization of posters across campus bathrooms. IU works alongside It's On Us, an organization dedicated to combating college sexual assault. The destruction of It's On Us posters has been ongoing over the course of the semester. As a result, a roundtable discussion of consent was held at the Office for Sexual Violence Prevention and Victim Advocacy just last week. Moving on to another pressing issue that affects students right here at IU. These are difficult days for the children of undocumented immigrants, often called DREAMers because of the act Congress passed to protect them. Many of them are now students in the United States, including some right here on campus. IU sophomore Evelyn San Sanchez is one of them. The U.S. Supreme Court will soon rule to, on whether to support President Trump's order to shut down the DACA program, a program which shields them from deportation. IU signed a letter of support for DACA students as the issue came before the High Court last month. But Evelyn Sanchez says IU can do more when it comes to assisting them. There's a big room for improvement. Um, yes, we do have a Latino culture center, but that shouldn't be where it stops. Um, again, even with the Office of Scholarship, I believe they haven't had the best training when it comes to undocumented students and the financial aid differences, so I feel like the university could do a better job of that. The U.S. Supreme Court is expected to announce a decision on the fate of the DACA program no later than June 2020. Until then, those affected by DACA await the ruling that could change their lives forever. And now moving on to some big news in sports. The IU football bowl game has officially been announced. To finish up one of IU's best seasons in years, the Hoosiers will take on Tennessee in the Jacksonville Gator Bowl on January 2nd. This is one of the oldest active bowl games in the country. If the Hoosiers win, head coach Tom Allen would be one of three coaches in history to lead the team to a bowl win. And it was a week of the highest of highs, but the lowest of lows for Hoosier basketball. After a career high of 30 points for senior Devontae Green last week, the Hoosiers passed number 17, Florida State. They suffered their first loss of the season in a tough matchup against the Wisconsin Badgers last Saturday. But the Hoosiers' next matchup is tonight as they take on the Yukon Huskies. 
Now that it's time for the holidays, outside the IMU, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. And it all started last week with a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. A massive candle is now shining brightly on the side of the IMU. This was the first ever light up the night event. Though it was below freezing, nearly 150 people showed up for the festivities. The organizers decided to start this new tradition to commemorate IU's bicentennial. Everyone came together for an event, and even though it was like only the first event, like there was a really good turnout, and everyone was having fun, drinking hot chocolate, the candle was lit, and it was just a really good time. So I really hope in the future we can get like an even bigger turnout. The celebration featured performances by a small group of singing Hoosiers, as well as a tiny ice skating rink. The Indiana Memorial Union Board plans to stage the Light Up the Night event again next year. And not only is the outside of the IMU ready for the holidays, but also the inside. Some sweet decorations are just waiting when you walk in. A giant gingerbread house is set up in the East Lounge of the IMU. The IU catering team built the house out of large pieces of gingerbread and lots of candy. There's a Kit Kat path up to a licorice line door. There are frosting bushes with candy flowers and Skittle window boxes. The gingerbread house is an annual part of the holiday decorations at the IMU. And that's all we have today for you for the IU Newsnet Daily. I'm Katrina Nickel. And I'm Carly Van Cleve. From all of us at IU Newsnet, including the many behind the scenes, thanks for watching this semester. We'll be back in the new year.